In this Webflow tutorial, I'll teach you how to apply basic animation throughout your Webflow site. So in this example website, dereksu.com.au, you can see there's basic interactions whenever the elements load on the screen, they appear to fade up or just fade from the side. Another example is this website, ordinaryfolk.co. If I refresh the page, you can see we have elements sliding in from the left of the screen. As I scroll down, everything's just fading in very, very subtly. If I go to a different page, let's say, for example, processes, you can see it has animations coming from the side and from the bottom, and it's just very, very subtle. And I'll show you how to do this in Webflow. Okay, so now that I'm in Webflow, I just have a dummy project loaded up. Again, you can have whatever project or website you want. The whole point of my tutorials is just to teach you the premise. So right now, you should understand that every single element is essentially a box. And I'm right now selecting the box called Walsh-Left-Hero. Obviously, you might have something different. But this whole box right here, if I hit delete, it's going to delete everything inside that box, as you should probably know if you're a Webflow developer. But what we can do is we can either apply an animation to a class directly, which will affect everything. And that's why classes are so important. It's just for efficiency. Or we can go ahead and animate everything one by one. But in this case, I just want to make this whole box right here. So this heading text, this paragraph, and this button to slide in, let's just say, from the left to the right. So with the whole box selected, and go ahead and hit interactions, element trigger, I can hit plus, and there's many different triggers. So, you know, mouse on tap, mouse hover. But the one that we're gonna visit is scroll into view, which just means whenever this box is in view of the screen, that's when the animation is gonna start playing. If you looked at my previous tutorial, such as the hamburger menu in a custom nav bar, we use the mouse click tap. So I encourage you to explore each one of these. I won't be going into detail of each one, just scroll into view. So I'm gonna hit this, then it says when scrolled into view, what animation do you wanna play? And there's also an animation optionally, when this is scrolled out of view, what animation do you wanna play? So let's go ahead and go and scroll into view. We can go ahead and select this drop down, And this already in Webflow predetermines a couple of animations already built. So we have fade, we have slide, etc. Let's just say, for example, I want the slide. You can see it's saying direction, slide in, and it's even showing this drop down right here with predefined components or predefined animations of how we want this to slide in. So we can slide in from the, le the left to the right, which is what we want, or we can do bottom left. So if I hit this button here, we can also hit preview right here, and that'll just show what that looks like. And you'll know that this specific box or this element is applying the animation because it's the master or the parent of this heading, of this paragraph, and of this this button as we established. So you could just animate each one, but for the sake of this video, I'm animating all three at one time. And you'll notice that it's animating because on the top right, you can see this green Thunderbolt icon. That means an animation or interaction has been applied. Similarly, on my layer panel, which I have pinned, you can see that next to this specific layer or this div block, we have this icon right here, this Thunder icon. It says element has an interaction. So with that done, we can go ahead and apply this to the class, or we can just apply it to the element. And this is very important. So if it's just the element, this just applies it to this specific box. But if you put to class, this means this animation will apply through every single class. So if you reuse this, you can apply it very easily. So in a nutshell, if you code a website in a certain way, let's just say all your buttons are using the exact same class, and you want the button to have a certain interaction or animation when the page loads, you can just apply it to the entire class. You don't have to go manually and change it one by one. So in this case, I'll just stick to the element. Now if I preview the site, you can see it's now fading in. Let's go ahead and select this guy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit interactions, scroll into view, and I'll go ahead and hit slide. But this time, I'm gonna go ahead and slide this guy from the bottom right to the top left. Now if I preview it, it does this. Now if I preview the whole website, you can see the left-hand side is sliding and the right-hand side is sliding the opposite direction because that's exactly what we define. What we can also do is we can add an offset or a delay. So let's go ahead and just play around with the delay. We can go ahead and put a delay of 1,200. That means this is gonna take one second and 200 millisecond for this animation to start. So if I now preview it, the left comes in and after 1.2 seconds, the right comes in. So that's what a delay is. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down 
and I just have a three pricing section right here, but you can see this is using the exact same class. You see right here, one, two, and three. Now, if I want to apply an animation to all three of these boxes, because they're sharing the same class, I don't need to do it one by one. So I'm going to go ahead and select this box right here with this class right here, hit interactions, hit plus, hit scroll into view, hit the action. And in this time, maybe I'll hit grow big. And you can go ahead and hit preview and that's what it looks like. So I can go ahead and apply this to the class. And because these two tables right here, the pro and the premium are using the exact same class. Now, if I go ahead and load the site, you can see all the boxes are appearing one on top of each other. But you'll notice right here, if I preview one more time, this most popular is behind everything. That's because this isn't being applied in my case. So that's a fantastic thing is the ability to apply it into a class. You'll notice if I preview this site, you can see it's already loading this animation because it's in the view. So that's when we go into offset. So if we don't want this to load straight away, we can offset it. So again, to clarify, if I preview the site, it's already loading this animation because it's inside the screen viewport. But if we go ahead and for example, put an offset of 50%, now if we preview the animation, you can see it's not loading. These three animations are not loading until I scroll down 50% of the screen, then it starts loading. So that's something interesting to note. Lastly, what I want to discuss is the fact that you can put your own animation. So for example, in this footer right here, I go ahead and select this class, which is being used throughout. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit plus. I'm gonna go hit scroll into view. This time in action, instead of using a predefined element, which, which is perfectly normal, I can go ahead and hit start an animation and create a new one. So I can go ahead and hit plus in this time animation and give it a name of, let's just say, um, animation in. Obviously you'll call it something applicable. And because now that I've selected this box, I can do whatever I want. That's the great thing with Webflow. So I can hit plus and I can change the move. I can change the scale. I can change the opacity, you know? So for example, if you want to slow fade, we can click opacity. And at the start, we can make the opacity to be 0%. We can put set as initial state. We can even affect the class. So it affects all three of them. Then where it says N, we can go ahead and hit the plus. We can go ahead and hit opacity one more time. And this time we can change the PC to 100%. And if we hit play, it's going to just do that 0.5 second opacity when it's in view. But we can make it even more flexible. We can put a delay into it. We can change the duration of the fade. So for dramatic purposes, let's change this to five seconds. We can even change the easing. Let's say, for example, out court. So feel free to play around with all this. But right now, I've just created a custom animation. I'll hit save. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this to all of the classes, which is all of these. And now if I preview it, you can see we have this animation coming in. We can see this box is coming in. And now if I scroll to the bottom, it's going to make a five second fade from 0% opacity to 100 for all of these because they're sharing the exact same class. So that is in a nutshell how these interactions work. Just want to let you know, you'll notice below here where it says trigger setting, you can apply this animation to be only in a certain breakpoint. For example, I only want this to appear on desktop and tablet. So in this case, I might untick phone landscape and phone portrait. Sometimes you don't want the animations to appear because on top of my head, you might have an overflow auto where everything is swipeable across the screen and therefore it won't really load until it's in view. So that might ruin your animation. So this is very specific, but you can do that. And also just to note, you can also put a scrolled out of view animation as well, which follows the exact same premise. So I hope you guys found this video super helpful. This is the general premise of Webflow interactions. Very, very powerful stuff. Um, just keep in mind, when you look at a website and they have even more crazy animations than this, they're using perhaps a library, for example, GSAP. But this is a fantastic way to put animations. And another good point is it depends on what website you're building. You don't need to put crazy animation. That doesn't really do much unless it's like a portfolio site or you have an animation company, which just makes sense. Sometimes for a business site, you just want something very simple, like this website right here, where it just subtly fades in, just to, just to accentuate the website a bit more, but it's not overkill. You know, it's not like 10 million things flying in because it, it distracts from the user. So just keep that in mind. But I hope you found this video helpful. Check out more of my videos right here. I'm also releasing a course in the future, so be sure to sign up. And I will see you in the next one. May peace be with you.